Hey up, thanks for joining me, I hope you're well. I'm not gonna be doing too much talking on this video, you know I don't like to do that, but I did think this deserved a bit of an intro. I'm here in Swinnerton in Staffordshire, and I'm about to start a 33 mile hike over three days with two nights of stealth camping. And the route is called the Stone Circle Challenge. Now I wanna make a bit of a disclaimer straight away. The name is derived from the fact that it's circular and it's around the town of Stone, hence Stone Circle. It has nothing whatsoever to do with Neolithic topography or anything like that. So first of all, big apology to any archeologists, pagans, who may have tuned in expecting something a bit more interesting. Uh, you're gonna be disappointed, I'm afraid. You're very welcome to stay, but no hard feelings if you don't. The last thing I wanna do is get any bad juju off the Wiccans. So what have I got to do today then? Well, it's nearly midday on Saturday of the August bank holiday. And I've just got about 10 miles to do today. So not too bad. Although my rucksack's quite heavy, 16 kilos and a couple of kilos of camera equipment as well. But I've got a good eight hours of daylight. I'm going to take my time, lots of rests, lots of photography, I hope. And um, I'm hoping it'll be relaxing and enjoyable. Right then, I better get off.
Morning folks, just getting on for seven o'clock on day two. First night's camp done successfully. This is the private woodland where I've stealth camped. And there's my setup. I've had a good seven hours of sleep at least, um, but it was painful sleep, sadly. My knee was really playing up. It's been a problem now for well over a year and I badgered it a bit on a walk in the Peak District at the start of the year. It's not been quite the same since. But it could well have been all the kneeling down yesterday, getting the equipment done that did for it, because on the walk actually it was fine. It wasn't a problem at all. Right, so let's have a bit of a geek's corner. Um, the tarp is actually a poncho tarp, if you can see that. There's the hood there. That's a Helicon Tex new acquisition. Not an expensive thing, I think about 20 quid. But it's been brilliant. You'll have seen me wearing it yesterday in the unexpected rain. I looked a bit of a spam javelin for sure, but it did the trick. And as a tarp, I'm actually really impressed. It pitches really well. And then looking underneath, let me just try and get down here. We've got the Snug Pack Ionosphere, the Old Faithful. I deliberated a bit about whether to bring my new Hilleberg Enan on this trip which would have been very lightweight and given me sitting room which this doesn't have but I'm glad I brought this now because well A it's nice and stealthy look how it's lower than the bracken look it's a shame I've had to put the tarp on top but that was because of the rain yesterday and um, also a little bit I'd be a bit less worried about it getting snagged. It's not the most expensive thing. If it did get ripped on a bramble or something, I wouldn't cry quite as much as if the uh, Hilleberg did. And the biggest advantage, which I'm really pleased now that I brought it, is, look at this, let me just get a bit closer. Absolutely crispy, bone dry. There's not one drop of moisture or condensation anywhere, inside or out. That's because of this uh, sort of gap all the way around, which makes it nice and airy inside, but that's not a bad thing in certain circumstances. So, uh, yeah, in terms of room, I'm six foot one and I had wiggle room at the bottom for my toes and I managed to get all my kit above my head there as well, no problem. And there's, you know, width as well. It's deceptively spacious. People um, are a bit upset that it's not very high, but that's the point. If you think of it as the world's most luxurious bivvy bag rather than the world's most compromised tent, then you're onto a winner. As regards the sleeping stuff, 
climate insulated static V pad, a mountain equipment down bag. Again, very good to know that it's dry in here with a down bag, especially on a two day hike, because I've got to get into that tonight. And if it gets wet, I'm knackered. It was cold last night as well, it only got down to a few degrees, so I'm glad I brought that. And then the ever popular Sea to Summit pillow. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what I've used. Right, I better start packing up and get out of here. Right, so the camping equipment's been great, but the camera equipment, unfortunately, has let me down, particularly the GoPro. Um, the GoPro itself's all right, and I bought this new media mod for it, especially for this trip, so I could mount an external microphone and put a, like a wind sock on it. But it's this tripod selfie stick thing. I think it's called the three-way. Not cheap. And it hasn't even lasted half a day yesterday before one of these fell out somewhere en route. Now that's annoying from a leave no trace point of view as well. But I don't feel it's my fault. I had no idea that it had fallen out somewhere. Um, so yeah, big fail from GoPro. And it does mean that the GoPro footage now, I'm stuck with just holding it like that. Okay, which isn't going to be great. So apologies in advance. This video is going to be compromised because of rubbish GoPro equipment. Just showing you how well that snug pack ionosphere blends in in woodland like this. You can see it there in the middle. This is the side of the footpath, which is 100 yards or so behind me, and you can't see a thing. Been really lucky with that fallen tree. Big props to a lady called Ruth, who made a video of doing this entire hike in a single day. I think she did it in about nine hours, running some of it, power walking the rest. Now this was only a few weeks ago, and she came up this path here in bare legs, saying that she'd rather hurt her legs than hurt her running gear. So, that's hardcore. Fair play, Ruth. You're a tougher cookie than I am. Whilst we're on the shout-outs, there's some hills over there. I won't name them. They're the favourite spot of Adam, the midlife crisis guy. I wonder if he's up there now. Wave, Adam.
ended like the shooting star. Well that's day two's walking done, not going to lie, it was hard work. It was the longest day today in terms of miles, it's about 13 miles. But um, my knee was really bad, I had a bad night with it last night, as I said earlier, and it just got worse throughout the day sadly. I got some painkillers uh, down me sort of halfway and that's really really helped. And at the moment it's not too bad be interesting to see what kind of a night I have but I'm determined to do this anyway so I'm here at my second camp spot which is a lovely little spot called Hopton Pools just outside Stafford I used to live fairly nearby many years ago and I've always liked it um, and I really really want to camp here for nostalgia's sake I never have done before the problem is is it's not very easy to be stealthy here. Um, there's plenty of houses overlooking um, where I'm going to be camped. It's a fishing pool down there so there's a couple of lads in uh, bivvies, well you know they're kind of bivvy, 
palaces compared to the kind of bivvies us wild campers are used to. Now I don't know whether they're going to be here all night, whether they allow night fishing. Um, in some ways if they do I'm quite reassured because they're not going to be too narked by me being here. But then on the other hand if they're here maybe they might see me up on the hill and think well he's obviously not an angler and I don't know, I don't know how it works. So there's a little bit of anxiety about how this is going to work and I've got a fair bit of time to kill as well before it gets dark but we'll see. I'm sure it'll be fine. It might just be a bivy bag for me rather than the ionosphere so I'm really really low profile. I have brought one with me and just hope there isn't any rain. Right okay so I'm going to start thinking about getting some dinner on and wish me luck. Well this was not forecast, this is a real bonus, a sunset, very nice, cheers folks. Well, what's it come to, eh? A few months ago I was making videos on doing authentic carbonara with guanciale, pecorino cheese, the lot. Now, I've got spaghetti carbonara, dehydrated. Uh, don't tell Mrs. Cottonbud, she might be a bit cross. So the sun has long since set as you can see and it's lovely and peaceful now. The wind's died down and as far as I know there's no people about. Just before sunset though there was a chap walking his dog and I saw him on the horizon and he seemed to be looking at me and he came right past me and, and seemed to be making a beeline for me and was quite curious what I was up to. I thought oh no I've been rumbled. Anyway, turns out he was a really, really nice guy called Graham and we got chatting. He was telling me about how the HS2 is going to go literally right through here. And uh, actually the village where I live, HS2 is going through there as well. And we were both having a good old moan about that. He had a nice dog as well called Rossi, named after Valentino Rossi, which will please the wife because she's from the same region in Italy that he's from. But uh, yeah, basically I came clean to him what my plans were for tonight about camping here and he seemed to think that I'd have no problems at all, there shouldn't be anybody about and he certainly, as a local resident, wasn't bothered by it. So uh, yeah, thanks for that Graham, that's put me at ease a little bit and made me relax. I think I'm going to probably get the ionosphere out so that I can... Uh, protect myself from any unwanted rain showers in the night. But it is lovely. I'm really, really glad I uh, picked this spot.
stuff it over there. Well, this is very irritating. My OS Maps app, which I pay, I don't know, 25 quid or something every year as a subscription, just will not work this morning. I've turned my phone on and off a few times. Um, there's plenty of signals, nothing to do with that. And even so, I've got the off, offline downloaded map, which should work anyway. So very, very disappointed there. It's a good job I'm not anywhere dangerous, like on Dartmoor or the Peak District in a load of fog. Um, and it goes to show as well, I always have a printed out map. I actually print it out from the uh, the app on my computer, luckily. So using more traditional methods, I think I'm going the right way. But what a pain. Flat as a Wiccan's memories, this bit. Oh no, I've done it again. Sorry Wiccans. Just reminded me of my chat with Graham last night. We were both of the opinion that we've never actually met anybody that agrees with it or thinks it's a good idea. Apart from the damage to nature, it's not going to turn the north into a powerhouse. It's just going to turn it into yet another London commuter belt. Drive the house prices up, make it more difficult for young people to get on the ladder. Bad, bad, bad. Stop it. Just to add to the catalogue of moans this morning, I've developed a squeak. Can you hear it? Just on my right side, something on the rucksack. Can't be doing with that for the next 10 miles. I don't know, what's going wrong this morning? It's almost like someone's put a curse on me. Almost feels like central Italy. With the parched fields and the crickets. It's actually surprisingly hot. Look. 
this branch in front of the style. Now, I might be paranoid, but that branch doesn't look like it's falling off that tree. That doesn't half look like it's been placed there. It's trying to put people off coming through. Anyway, I'm going to have to do something about that because I can't get over that. And that's the only way to go. So, Swiss Army knife. Going to get the saw out and try and sort that out. And if the farmer has put it there, which I'm not saying he or she has, but if they have, up yours. Right, there it is. Not what I need on a hot day in the last few miles of 33 mile track. I couldn't get past. And this is the only way. Right, let's get on with it. Mr. Ball. Now this is Swinnerton Church. So I'm very nearly there. I'm just going to make it back to the tree point where I started. Touch the trig point, that's for Lee. Burton Outdoors, I know he loves it. Right, so I'm back where I started and the stone circle challenge has been completed. It was a challenge, not because it was particularly hard terrain, far from it, but because I'm old and knackered and fall into bits. But anyway, I did it. It's the first time I've camped more than one night so having to carry everything with me, I've been totally self-sufficient, filtering my own water, carrying all my supplies, etc, etc. So I'm chuffed. I shall go home now, have a nice cold beer, nice hot bath, and ready for work tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me on whatever my next challenge is. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.